Hello everybody and welcome back. It's me, Shwebe, and welcome to Small Burb. This little guy's name is Zyablik, and he's on a quest to find the missing stars, and apparently we also have to, like, help grant their wishes and get as many as we possibly can. This looks absolutely adorable, so we're just gonna go ahead and see where this journey will take us. So far, it, it's just, it's so cute, I couldn't pass up on it. Look at this. Gorgimus. This is what asteroids in space actually do when they aren't skyrocketing across the midnight night. Night? Midnight night night sky? You get what I mean. In the darkness of infinite space on a small asteroid, so small that you can get around it in ten minutes, or in five, walking at a good pace, lives Zyablik. The asteroid is far, far away from other human settlements. The nearest living creatures are thousands of kilometers away in the constellation of Sagittarius. This is so freaking cute. There are no major trade routes here, and rockets pass by only once in a while. If anyone does end up here, those are the explorers of the new worlds and civilizations who boldly go where no man has gone before. Or in this case, Space Bird. Spurb has gone nowhere before. Sometimes they stop at Zyablix to rest and leave him food and flower seeds in gratitude. Aw, oh, that would explain the little flower garden that he's got there. So cute. Oh, is that a swing? So precious. Every morning, Zyablix wakes up, makes his bed, and waters his flower garden. Then there is time for daily cleaning. He sweeps the stones and the stardust scattered by the cosmic winds away from the asteroid. I don't know. This is such a neat concept of the idea of something living on an asteroid. It's almost kind of like King Kai from Dragon Ball Z living on this tiny little planet of sorts. That concept in itself is just amazing to think about. Oh? And I don't know, Stardust, I think I'd probably like, if, if you're able to collect enough of it, like put it in little jars and hand it out as souvenirs to the people that stop by your asteroid. After lunch, he impatiently looks up at the sky because up there, on an invisible path so old that it only exists in memory, Large male fish pass by with their mouths full of envelopes. Are you- oh my god, they have a mailing system in space and it's by space fish. That's amazing. No one knows where they came from or where they are going, but the fish d diligently do their job and each envelope finds its recipient. That's so cool. Male fish never make mistakes or get lost in the darkness. I'd imagine not if you grew up in space. Oh, wow, that's so cute. And each day, one of these fish comes close to Zyablik's small asteroid, leaving on his doorstep a tiny snow-white square envelope with a heart drawn on it. Aw. He's always looking forward to this moment because he knows that somewhere far away, he has a friend who sends him a message every day, tells him how she is doing, and what stars are out in the sky today? Oh, This is so cute! <laughs> One day he would pack up and come to her for her birthday as he had promised, but the letters have been enough so far. Oh, this is just... It's gorgeous! I'm not gonna get over this with every new scene. It's just so colorful and pretty. I love it. And Zyablik was happy. But one day, no letter was brought. And no letter was brought on the next day, or even the next week after. Aww. Zyablik began to worry. He waited and waited for the fish to pass by so he would get a line from the distant soulmate to hold in his hands. But there were no letters. That very day was approaching, the day when he promised to appear before his lady friend. Zyablik was waiting for the right moment, and it finally came. He is ready. It remains to wait for one single postman, at least. However, day after day, the sky remained empty and lonely. Poor Zyablik, he's gotta go meet his soul, make him a Pikachu! And a cactus. How did he get the cactus? Oh? The cosmic sky glows through the window. The room glimmers with the soft goldish light of lamps. The rays gently lick the warm-looking blanket, the table littered with envelopes, the wooden floorboards. The shadows on the walls resemble strange, unseen animals. Hmm. 
Almost all the calendar dates are crossed out. One square is left empty. The next is circled in red. Zyablik jumps off the bed, which creaks under his weight. Rubbing his eyes, he softly shuffles to the calendar and picks up a marker to sadly cross out the last day. He's so cute. So today is the day. Maybe I should try it one last time. There have been no male fish for a long time. But I shouldn't lose hope, should I? What if I get lucky? Turns to the mirror, flattens the folds of his poncho, and smooths the ruffled feathers. Let's see. What should I put on today? Put on the bucket? Put on the cup? Okay, so this game does have... They say two main endings, plus there's an additional one. I'm not really sure what that means, but it's based on our choices, so let's see what we get. Um, let's put on the cup. <laughs> Wait, he's wearing it? How? Question, how big is this cup? How small is Zyablik? I have questions. The cup slides slightly to the side, giving him the perfect charm. Oh, it's so cute. Well, it's time to pack up. The most important thing is not to forget that which matters most. He approaches the table. All the letters are made of different types of paper. Some of the pages are ordinary. Some are dense and colored with printed images. All of them are signed carefully, and each one has a stamp on. Zyblik folds the sheets neatly. Let's see, the letter on top is unsealed, and you can see the edge of the sheet with the text on it. Well, let's go ahead and read it, because I don't know what's on it. The letter is completely unreadable. Does anyone understand bird language? If so, we'll leave a full printout of the text below. Perhaps you'll be curious to know what the anthropomorphic birds are chirping about. Here it is. Oh, come on. No, that's Morse code, and I am not going to spend the time looking up Morse code. Alright, just put it away. Uh, once upon a time, I could probably do the Morse code, but not anymore. Zyblik slowly binds the letters with a satin ribbon, hides them inside a pocket under the poncho, out of public view. Oh, that's so pretty! Better safe than sorry. Losing stuff is not what you want to do on a trip. Zyblik looks out the window, slightly lifting the curtains, which are decorative rather than convenient. The sky outside the window has changed its color to quite a fancish hue, and the time is slowly but surely approaching the lunch mark. The stars in the sky shine brighter than they usually do at this time, as if they have just had a good meal and are now resting. He pulls the door handle and goes out on the porch. So freaking cute. His nose fills with the pleasant scent of flowers, slowly swayed by the cosmic breeze. An embarrassment of riches. There are Aldebaran pim Pimpernels, I'm gonna assume that's a flower name, <laughs> that taste like cheesecakes. Theta scale bluebells that imitate all kinds of sounds and cardison succulents that change their hue due to that of the eyes looking at them. Okay, so space flowers. That's actually really cool. Invisible at first glance, along among all those flowers, hides a delicate earth plant on a thin stalk. A chamomile. Chamomile tea is actually really good. Aww. It does not have bright, huge petals or magical properties, but it attracts with its fragile beauty. He gently runs his hand along the petals, squatting by the chamomile, and then carefully digs out the flower and transplants it into the nearest flower pot. Ta-da! Joyfully raises the flower pot above his head. His eyes are shining. Great. The perfect gift for the perfect lady friend is found. Everything seems ready, but the most difficult thing remains to wait for someone to pass by the asteroid. And then everything will be like clockwork. He approaches the swing and gently pushes it. The swing moves slowly back and forth. He sits on the swing and raises his head to the sky, barely swaying his legs. The creak of the swing is so soothing. It creaks as if telling amazing stories about love, friendship, about huge space lions competing in a battle for the throne, while a young man with a braid annoys the teacher with questions about life, death, 
and space. While the stars collide, setting off fireworks of tiny sparks and igniting black holes, Zyblex snuggles against the cold pipe of the swing and nods, clutching his flower pot with a, pa with a plant. I think that means with a pant. What? It'll all work out. Familiar sounds are heard. At first, they seem delirious, cloudy. But then somewhere far away in the sky, a moving dot appears. Something barely mumbles. But then these sounds get louder and louder, turning into puffing, grumbling, and body songs. Zybek flinches, waking up from a sweet dream. He hides the flower pot under his poncho and raises on the swing, standing tall with his two feet, trying to figure out the shape of the creature in the cosmic blue. He holds his hand over his eyes, squinting. A minute later, the pop-eyed creature is seen clearly. It has a funny fish tail and a funny cap. That must be the male fish! Little by little, she waddles her way, though she knows the road perfectly to the smallest stars and clouds. As if she could swim all that way with her eyes closed. Zyblik hastily checks his pockets. The letters are with me. The cup. He carefully touches his head. Is here. The sandwich. Jumps up hesitantly, glancing at the house. Isn't he running late? Let's see. Should I run to fetch a sandwich or not? Uh, maybe... Maybe not, because male fish is already on the way, so we'll forget the sandwich. Zyblik rushes to the house as fast as he can, holding the cup on his head, and stops somewhere in the middle of the way. Looks at the fish. The fish is already passing the nearest star and will soon be close to the asteroid. Zyblik shrugs and goes back. The sandwich isn't, the import isn't that important after all. He hastily returns to the swing. The male fish is right above his head. It's time to swing! Oh? Zyblik swings forth. And you swing back. Zyblik swings back. Swing forth. See, Zyblik swings forth twice. Swing forth again. Something went wrong. Start again. Oh, okay, I got it. Back, forth, back, and release. Whee! <laughs> Zyblik flies up, letting go of the handles of the swing. The asteroid is left behind. It's now the only way, the second star to the right and straight on till morning. Did you really just pull a Peter Pan? I'll give you points for that because that's my favorite book and movie, especially Hook. I love that movie. Roach? Kiddo, you alive? Hey, kiddo. An unconscious stowaway on my back, that's all I needed. An unfamiliar voice grunts. He almost knocked me off course, and I lost my cap because of him. Jeez. Oh. I don't think that's the male fish. <laughs> Zyblik holds the fish very tight with one eye open. Do you need a special invitation to say something? Zyblik tries to pull himself up and almost falls off the fish, slithering closer to her head. The flight wasn't really unpleasant. Oh, hang on. The flight wasn't really pleasant. But nothing seems to be broken. The fish suddenly twitches. Uh-oh. Ah! Zyblik flies up and lands exactly in the middle of her back. He crawls closer to the puffer fish's eye and gets comfortable, cautiously studying the void around him. Looking at the male fish and energetically nods in gratitude. The fish glowers at the new companion. Well, so? Don't beat around the fish! I have a feeling he only speaks burb. I don't think he can speak fishinese or any other things. Cyblik hastily pulls the letters out of the poncho, carefully unties the bow, and forgets himself for a second, letting go of the ribbon. The ribbon disappears behind on the cosmic road as it gets further and further away. One more second, and it is lost in the darkness. Frightened, he holds the letters tight, watching the ribbon flicker in the distance. A moment later, after some hesitation, he turns to the male fish, holding out the envelope with a heart drawn on it, and another one with a stamp. The huge pufferfish scans of the names of the sender and the recipient on the envelope and curses silently. So you're Zyablik. I go by Roach. Roach smiles, looking straight ahead. You're a little piggy, Zyablik. 
Another adventurer who decided to cross the oceans for the sake of his lady friend. No please or thank you. You just randomly bumped into me and didn't even apologize. I've seen a lot of arrogant pricks like you. Dozens of them. Ah. And no one listens to what I'm saying. Yeah, I only saw the dinosaurs getting extinct. Big deal. You'll do it your way anyway. Anyway, you've done a bad thing, and you owe me the, f the fair price, that's for sure. And she stopped talking. Well, isn't she just a crab cake? I suppose the correct terminology would be fish cake. <laughs> I know I'm funny. Shh. Space settlements and a couple of rockets were left behind. Somewhere in the distance, the stars shone a particularly bright purple neon. Zyblik sits cross-legged, twisting the hem of his poncho and throwing side glances at his companion. So we can look at the head, look at the body, or stop. Uh, let's try looking at the head. Roach's face is looking extremely upset. She purses her lips and frowns a little. It seems that she's about to turn into an earth dog. A bulldog. That's right, a fish-shaped bulldog. <laughs> she looks like she's in her 30s, or maybe even 60s. You know these fish. We don't know these fish. She mentioned something about watching the dinosaurs go extinct. So, 30 what? 30 light years old or something? Excuse me? Well, uh, let's look at the body. Roach's body consists of many small gross to the touch. Small fins, a little tail... How could such a creature have survived for so long? All right, we'll stop now. Zyablik rubs his eyes, checks the pockets and the cup for the hundredth time in the past few minutes. Nothing's missing. They have a long way to go. The space is very unstable. Its hue and humor changes in a blink of an eye. It can be full of action when the sky is cut by the streaks of rocket engines, and in a few seconds, hundreds of stars seem to be the closest thing that can be found in this corner of the universe. It seems that you can reach them with your hand. Those realms are unknown and inaccessible, and the two are lost in them. But they have their goals, so they move on. And further. And further. And further... Basically into the deepest, unknown parts of space. Roach stops sharply without warning. Zyblik didn't have time to react. He almost fell off the fish, but was able to stay on her back at the last moment. A few letters fly out of his poncho and drift apart. Oh, no. Terrified. Twitches. Oh, hang on. Zyblik, terrified, twitches and reaches for the nearest envelope holding on to the male fish's fin. Roach catches one of the envelopes and holds it firmly in her mouth. He takes the second letter and holds it tightly, pressing it to his heart. He seems happy. Roach stays silent and then sighs heavily, rolling her eyes. Ugh, well, now you owe me twice. Zyblik nods, confused, and then hides the envelopes. They seem to be his only concern. You're green, that's all. To throw your life at the feet of some creature? To leave your home? What for? Think of the huge opportunities you have if you are not attached to anything. Roach strays the cosmos with her gaze, chewing her lip thoughtfully. You can make a lot of right and wrong decisions, as they say. When you make two mistakes, you still only die once, so why not? I suppose? But even still, eh, we'll, we'll nod to this. Zyablik nods with understanding. Well, it's up to you to listen to a wise old woman sharing her life experience or to look for your own cautionary tales. The fish seems to think deeply, and then says, either asking a question or making a statement, If you do a job for me, I will forget all your debts and even take you to your lady. Isn't that a grand offer? Zyablik so tilts his head with interest. <laughs> the scally fish, I tell you. Look at the sky. What do you see? Zyablik so looks around, turning his head. The sky in this part of space is so dark. Not as dark as in the nebulae, and not as disturbing as when you meet a smashed rocket somewhere. It feels like a threat. There is no life in here, and there is definitely something missing. The stars. The sky is missing the stars. And planets! It looks as if they have been erased from the map and left the sky empty. Do you see... Hang on. 
Do you see the guiding stars, kiddo? Neither do I. I guess this happened recently. My brothers and sisters left them... What? <clears throat> Hang on. I guess this happened recently. My brothers and sisters let them be eaten by a squid. Must be lost in space. Apparently, they did not pay attention to what they were taking and dragged the guiding stars. And without stars, there is no light, no landmarks, and certainly no one getting any letters. I've been a seasoned fish and I can swim with my eyes closed, but you, Fry, are getting lost in three asteroids. The fish purrs smugly over the words said. So the deal is to talk to my brothers, sisters, and to bring the stars back where they belong, and we're even. The job is not difficult. You'll also make friends and help others, so that the lady will have no choice but to fall in love with you. The opportunity to become a knight in shining poncho isn't an everyday offer, so don't miss out. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to agree because we got to go see our lady bird friend, right? Zyblik hesitates for a moment, then nods. Roach chuckles happily, expecting a good trip. Then go ahead. Wait, we can't swim in space like you can. We're going to stay on your back, right? I'm scared. <laughs> they reach the destination a lot faster than expected. This part of the sky is hazy, as if someone has spilled a bag of dry ice. Small, muddy areas, as if someone had just walked through the water and all the sand had risen from the bottom, appear around them. Here and there, the clouds are lighted by young stars. Zydlik tries to touch the fog to run his hand over it to feel the pressure. But the fog just cleared a little, revealing magnificent views of curly cosmic vortexes. The precious star gem seemed to be glued to the sky. Roach is slowing down. We're here. Okay. Zyblik squints his eye, searching for at least one living creature in this area. Uh, how about we look around just in case, because this fog looks like it's thicker than peanut butter. Just be on the safe side. Oh! Oh! Something seems to be flickering nearby the small blue planet. Or maybe it was just a temporary vertigo. However, there is nothing interesting to see. Alright, then we'll just keep going. Might as well. But I would suggest we be thorough because it's the vastness of space. I mean, come on. The pufferfish drifts slowly, humming something to itself, but then stops and nods ambiguously at a point in space. Be careful with Pero. He is really tender. Run as soon as he starts crying. What? Shakes, uh, Zyblik shakes his head in surprise and returns to looking for at least a silhouette of a fish. But nobody's there. Zyblik waves his arm as strongly as he can, giving Roach a sign to swim further, but freezes. Whoa! Oh, okay, he's huge. A huge round eye, so strange as if popped out from the worst secret fears, looks away. Sometimes moving the pupil. The eye doesn't blink at all and doesn't seem to notice what's going on. Sometimes the eye seems to fill up with water and sheds tears somewhere into some void that you can't really see from behind the laptop screen. Uh, no, don't touch the eye. What kind of silliness is that? <laughs> Zyablik, trembling in fear, wraps his hands around himself and tries to figure out what to do next. Let's try softly talking to him. Cause, don't touch. Go to randomly go up to somebody's eyeball and go, oh, what a pretty color. <laughs> ah! Yeah, let's not do that. Cyblik hesitantly pokes Roach in the ribs, pointing at the eye. Roach pouts angrily. Can you just talk to him? <sighs> oh, wait, no, I forgot. Cyblik speaks in birds. So I don't know how that's going to work. <sighs> okay, fine. Roach clears her throat, quacks, and shouts loudly in the direction of the eye. Paro! Someone wants to talk to you! Aw. Is it just stardust in his eyes or something? The other eye, a head, and a fin slowly and hesitantly come out of the clouds. A large, sad flounder looks at Zyblik in fear and merges with the surroundings again. I'm not in the mood to talk to you, sorry. Zyablik points to the shiny dots in the sky, then to the flounder, and again to the dots. Pyrrho sniffs, but does not come out of the cloud, appearing before Roach and Zyablik in all his glory. 
I knew you'd only come here because of the star. You don't need me at all. But I won't give it to you. It is now my best friend. And it has a pretty glow to it. But it didn't make me feel any better. And he starts crying again. Cyblet covers his ears, shriveling. Uh, the flounder screams very shrilly. You have to do something quickly. Okay, so it was a matter of because of how big he is, it's gonna be how loud he is. Okay. No. Why? Why would? We, okay, why is this? Why would we insult Piro? Do we want him to cry harder? Would he pop if we did that? He's not a puffer fish. I don't know. How about we try to exchange something? We got a cup. You want a cup? It'd be kind of weird. Zyblik hides his hands under the poncho, figuring out what can be exchanged. Something that is similar to a star. The letters? No, they have to reach the recipient. The flower. The chamomile. I think that that might be roughly equivalent. They're both living things. Zyblik hesitates but takes out a flower pot, adjusts the petals carefully, and lowering his eyes so that Pero does not see how upset he is, stretches forward the chamomile. This is... is this for me? Zyablik nods quickly and points to the small dots of the stars again. The flounder carefully examines the flower, then examines Zyablik and swims even closer to our hero. Can it tell me if anyone loves me? If, if I'm not mistaken, those flowers tell you if someone loves you, don't they? There is a barely noticeable shine of hope in Pero's eyes, a hope for something good among the endless hours of solitude, and Zyablik cannot resist it. He slowly nods, lowering his beak, and looks questioningly at Roach, making a strange movement with his hand. Of course, he does not want to give away his flower, and he doesn't want to ruin it even more, but if this is a way to the lady friend, then why not? Roach grunts, but still turns towards the flounder. Zyablik asks, so what are we guessing on a chamomile? Piero looks guiltily at Zyablik. Does anyone in this world love me? Maybe just a little? Zyablik nods, hesitantly taking the chamomile by the petal. The petals of the chamomile sway in the cosmic wind. Someone does. Oh, he's doing the do they love me, do they love me not game. Plucks the first petal. Pyrrha wipes away a tear with Zyablik's poncho, his eyes shining. The four petals of the chamomile sway in the cosmic wind. No one does. Roach purrs quietly and complacently, muttering something about unfulfilled love. Someone does. Zyablik trembles and tears off the third petal, squinting at Pyro, who is completely absorbed by the process. No one does. Everyone holds their breath. Even the cosmos seems to share the motley trio's anxiety. Someone does. Zyablik stops, looking at the last petal. Someone does. Pyro's eyes are filled with tears again, but those aren't the old tears of pain. Those are the tears of relief, joy, and happiness. He looks at Zyablik, at Roach, at Zyablik again. He is incredibly happy. It feels like another star is born somewhere. It really seems so until that guiding star appears as if from nowhere in front of Zyablik's nose. Zyablik gently picks it up with his hands, presses it to the heart, and lets the flower pot go. The flower floats in the air near Pero, whose smile shines as bright as the star. He silently nods at our hero. They understand each other without any words. Zyablik waves goodbye all the way back, watching the fog, which was really Pero's tears, dissipate. When they are so far away that Pero is not visible anymore, and the sky has changed its color to a softly goldish, the roach thanks Zyablik quietly. And they traveled on. That's so freaking cute! I have a feeling by the end of this he's probably going to give up all the things that he intended to give to his lady friend and all he'll have is himself. Which is just gonna be so adorable! I love s just sappy, overly lovey-dovey things like that. You didn't even have to try to guess who lives in this part of space. Among the variety of bright planets and cosmic transitions woven together you could see a long, sinuous body. 
Oh. Is it a snake? No! <gasps> is it a space eel? It swirled around the celestial spheres, visually uniting the space, bending with loops and creating a bizarre landscape. And in a distance, there was the creature's head, illuminated by the neon light of the guiding star that she wore as a crown. Eris. I've never seen anyone as selfish as she is. Do you want to get a star? Please her. Manage to fool her narcissism. Zyablik pulls the cup over his head, putting hands threateningly on his hips. Roach laughs. Well, this is one way to do it. They swim on, peering cautiously ahead. Maybe that's why they didn't notice one of the rings of the fish's body stretch out as a giant arc above, while the other cuts off the way back, tightening like a rope around a neck. Nowhere to run. Oh, yeah, she looks incredibly sassy. That thing's huge! That's a space eel? My word, no thank you. The eel's long body tightens its rings, squeezing space around Zyablik and Roach. Before they knew it, a long head with a sly face appeared right in front of them. The star's shining was blinding, so you had to bend to see who you're talking to. Well, 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 what a cute bird you got into my net today. She giggled, covering her mouth with one of her rings, and slowly stretched her tail towards Zyablik. Zyablik jumps back in panic. No, no, no need for that. Be a good boy. Don't try to run away or to do anything rude. That will only hurt you. Mommy does not want to use force at all. Okay, this Eris chickiel thing is kind of weird. I wouldn't say narcissism so much as just creepy. Uh, well, I don't want Zyablik to get hurt, so we're just going to do nothing. We're going to stand still and we're going to brave it. It's just, just only pet us. I really don't want, even want you to do that, but whatever. Zyablik puts a hand over Roach's eyes, soothingly stroking her head, telling her everything will be fine. It is better to resolve everything peacefully. Yeah, because, um, Eris is big enough she could eat us in one bite. Okay, let's maybe not piss her off. Zyablik looks at Eris confidently and nods. That's better. Yeah. I love men of honor. They have so much resilience. Ah! Eris laughs. Roach swears quietly. She seems to be very uncomfortable. Eris grins. She bends her neck in a strange way, and it seems that she isn't just a giant eel, but an ancient, all-powerful dragon. <gasps> a space eel dragon! My god! The rays of the star give Eris and the cosmos around her a touch of mystery. Let's put a real fine point on it. You need the star, and I need the star. Maybe you need the star even more for the sake of great feats, like saving a damsel in distress, or some other stupid things that heroes do. But my point is that I'm not interested in all of your stuff at all. The hero comes to save the princess from the dragon, but he doesn't really care about the princess, so he knocks the dragon down in blood, leaving the princess without a friend, and leaving himself without a reward. What a stupid hero. Eris's grin now looks even more predatory. She drowns her lips in a thin line, slightly exposing a set of teeth. Long. Razor. Sharp. Yeah! I'm sure she's got a very endearing smile, but I wouldn't want to be anywhere near that trap. Just saying. So make me an offer that I can't refuse, or you can sail back in peace and try to look for an anta antagonist somewhere else. I almost read that completely wrong. Good job, Brain. Sorry, sweetie, but your princess is in another castle. Did you just Mario me? I'm loving all these references, but stop it! <laughs> Zyablik looks at Roach questioningly, then turns to Eris, moves his hands curiously, and points at Eris again. Are you going to exploit my communication skills for much longer? Zyablik smiles guiltily. He can't talk in fish and dragonese. He talks in bird. I don't know what to tell you, man. Grumbles and says loudly and clearly, Zyablik has a few questions. 
Uh, we're better off figuring out what Eris likes, I think. Because we know what she wants. She wants to keep the star. She comes across as very greedy. But if she is an actual dragon, that makes sense. Because most dragon lore is they tend to have tons of treasure hordes and whatnot. Uh, what does she like? Hmm, geometry, tricks, and things I've never owned. For example, you, Roach. Eris chuckles. Roach twitches restlessly. Eris scares her to death. Hmm, okay. Continue. Zybuk scratches his back thoughtfully. He has some ideas of how to get the star. So we can offer her the letters, which we are so adamant on keeping... Because they're most likely for our lady friend. Or we can cheat. I don't recommend the idea of cheating. I feel like that's a very bad idea. And again, I don't really see the point in him, of him having the letters if we're going to go and see our lady friend eventually. Hopefully. <laughs> if we don't screw it up and wind up eaten by a space dragon. Offer the letters. Zyabla carefully takes a letter out of an inner pocket and hands it out. Love letters... Boring. Not interesting at all. Absolutely tasteless. If I wanted to own the heart of some poor thing, I would have done it long ago. Are you telling me that I only have the option of cheating now? Should I have looked up what she wanted? But I know what she wants! I think? Oh, now I feel dumb. Alright, fine. Cheat. Zyblet so crosses his hands and squints suspiciously, looking at Eris' head. Is there something wrong? Zyablik nods and squints even harder, as if he sees something completely wrong. Is the star skewed to the side? Zyablik nods again. Outraged, Roach opens her mouth but doesn't say a word, watching what will happen next. The eel suspiciously looks at Zyablik, then at Roach. I want you to find me a mirror, and you to fix the star so that it fits me well. And she leans lower to Zyablik. Zyablik orders Roach to swim closer, and when the star is right in front of his beak, he carefully adjusts it to the side. He hides the star under his cup quickly, slapping the eel on the forehead at the same time. He says it's alright! Eris throws Zyablik off. She is desperately looking for a mirror, or at least some kind of mirror surface. Eris twists her rings around the planets, drawing them closer. Cyablik gives her a thumbs up as he and Roach slowly sail away. I don't think that was the right choice. I feel like I was supposed to probably actually appease her. Now I feel bad, but she was gonna eat us or something. What do you want me to do? Further away, Eris notices a planet covered with mirror-like water surfaces and rushes there, forgetting about these two. Zyablik and Roach rush away as fast as they can. Soon they hear the screams of the fooled eel in the distance. The malefish spends the next couple of hours grumping about our hero's decisions. I'm sorry! I didn't know what to do! Don't be so mad. The site looks like a battlefield. There are chunks of asteroids and planets all around, and space is lit with the bright red. It's suspiciously quiet. Anxiety's growing. I don't want to be here any longer than is needed. Zablik nods nervously. They carefully loop between the parts of the celestial bodies, trying not to touch anything. Yeah, this looks sharp, like it's space glass or something. Sometimes they have to dive down sharply. Sometimes they squeeze between the parts of broken asteroids drifting around like dead bodies. Ah! Oh god, boom. What the hell? What? Among the dust and wreckage there is... A little goldfish with incredibly large eyes. He lifts his fins up in the air and with a war cry crushes a particularly large rock that happened to be in his path. My name is Khan! Screams the fish. Ah, uh, on the crashed rocks that lead ricochets towards our heroes. Dodge! Don't try and hide. That's probably not a good idea. Roach manages to get out of the way. The rock passes a millimeter away from Zyablik's beak. You have the stamina of a warrior and the endurance of a samurai! It's a pop-eyed goldfish. In space. Destroying asteroids. 
Uh, that sounds like a cool mascot, just saying. The goldfish looks boldly into Zyablik's eyes and then suddenly throws out the gauntlet at him. Where did the goldfish get the gauntlet from? That is a question we simply have no answer to, but it seems Khan is not doing this for the first time. I love that his name is Khan. I actually used to have a dog named Khan <laughs> many years ago. That's great. I challenge you to a fight! You have the right to agree! Or to run away like a coward! Then you will curse your entire family with your dishonor! Your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren! Everyone will know that you lost a fight to a cute little fish like me! Zyablik crosses his arms, looking at Khan with great incomprehension. Like, Qua, dude? What is up with you? I'll take your silence as consent, so get ready to defend yourself! What? Whoa, wait a minute. What is this? Are you serious? <laughs> oh, I love this. Khan's turn. Uh, let's out his ritual battle cry. He is thirsty for victory! Intimidate? Yeah, because that'll work. Zyablik makes a mean joke about goldfish and their memory that he heard from Roach. Khan is not impressed. Uh-oh. Zyablik gets minus two HP due to poor punchline. Khan makes a JoJo pose reference. The level of drama is doubled. Say whatever you want. I've not watched JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I've not watched most newer animes. But I still appreciate the reference. Zyablik is struck to the very heart by the toughness. Minus one HP. His cup turns out to be tasteless? What? The, imp the Empire Strikes Back? What? Zyablik gets down on one knee and blows a kiss, launching a combo. Roach begins to serenade the rocks. What? <laughs> Khan sobs, begging for mercy. Khan gets negative 12 HP? His sense of beauty suffered too much damage. Zyablik gets plus 3 HP cured by Khan's tears. Khan writes angry comments on the internet. His fanbase strikes all the posts of his enemy. <laughs> Zyablik's Twitter account is blocked indefinitely. He gets minus 0 HP. He's very surprised he had a Twitter account at all. Oh, realize our own capabilities. Zyablik draws the Batman fish sign on the screen. <laughs> Batman fish appears next to the sign. He is ready to defend fish Gotham. <laughs> the fish joker appears out of nowhere and they both fly into the sunset. The attack is skipped. God dang it. <laughs> I love all these references. Khan verbally insults Zyablik. Khan is given is publicly condemned. Ooh, Khan gets minus one HP. Zyablik earned the power of self-respect. Really? How do you want to end the fight? Uh, distract attention, finish him? All right, if we actually finish him, does this like actually hurt him or kill him? It just, we'll just distract his attention. How about that? So I feel like that might be nicer. I'm not trying to be a jerk, I promise. It just kind of happened with Eris. Zyablik threateningly takes the letters from under his poncho and holds them like a fan. His gaze is steady. Khan looks at Zyablik with the sincere hatred of the defeated. He's ready to receive the final blow. The letters, thrown in his direction, twirl like shuriken and fall gently in front of Khan, who starts reading the text written on the envelopes. Are these war trophies? Right? How many battles have you survived? The goldfish is completely distracted, aggressively tearing the envelopes and absorbing their contents with both his eyes. That will keep him a few minutes. Zyablik examines the landscape. It is finally visible. Uh... The star must be somewhere over here. I would think it would be near Khan. Wouldn't that be his sort of war trophy? How about we examine uh, the area around Khan first? Zyablik didn't want to get close to this little bundle of rage again, but after a careful examination, he doesn't find anything interesting around him. Okay, so then it'd have to be in the nearby debris. Aha! That's still near him! His eyeball's right there! <laughs> no star was to be found, neither in the nearest nor in the second nearest bunch of planets, debris. 
and only in a fault of particularly large planet, the star shone a star. The star shone a star. What? I feel like some of these sentences need to be restructured. <laughs> Carefully hidden from prying eyes. Cyblik looks at the goldfish and his love letters. There are almost no love letters left. Time to flee! Roach flew off as fast as she could. Zyblik almost lost his cup in surprise. It was a hard day. Our heroes were far away when the malefish spoke. Sorry about your letters. They are just paper, though. You can always write more. Zyblik ambiguously shrugs his shoulders. It was a shame to go see his lady friend with his hands empty. At least they were heading in the right direction in the starless darkness. Again. Even if he were to show up with absolutely nothing, the fact that these two will finally get to meet in person... I think in that self speaks more in more volume than mere trinkets that you could bring like the love letters of flower yes that's really cool and all but considering they've been wanting to see each other forever and it'll be on her birthday that and I think you know that in itself I think would be lovely to have Roach slowly cuts through the cosmic haze towards the point where the journey has begun telling Zyblik about her work and old acquaintances the one they just met, the ones they'd never see again. Space was slowly changing its color. Ooh. Red patches appeared here and there, reminiscing the epic battle that had just taken place. A fog fell down on them suddenly, and the travelers got lost, with only their intuition to rely on while searching for a direction. Sometimes they felt like Parrot's big eye followed them with a heavy stare. Sometimes in the outline of a bizarre constellation, they saw Eris' smile. And everything felt like a forgotten dream, an experience, and a past life. A story that never really happened. All the both of them wanted was to fall asleep for many days. To sleep in advance for the rest of their lives. That was the point of no return. Under Zyablik's cup, the three stars twinkled softly, reminding him of the purpose of the entire trip. The colors that had previously seemed bright faded more and more as the travelers drew closer to the darkness. They see less and less stars around and living creatures they see along the way also disappear. Roach stopped at the border of the darkness where all paths end. The flow of time had become entirely arbitrary for the moment. Both travelers were trembling with either impatience or fear. Well, here we are. Roach was also terribly worried. Any last words? A testament? Anything else? Zyablik shrinks and hesitantly touches the cup with his hands. Listen, don't be afraid. You did everything you could. You him and haw, but it's all no use crying over spilled stars. And she laughed so hard that her laughter echoed many parsecs away. Zyablik, encouraged, he smiles and lifts the cup. The stars flicker out of the cup, one by one, filling the space with lights. They moved farther and farther away, carrying their radiance and the messengers of the restored paths. Space flared up with the guiding lights. The male route, which had been recently deserted, slowly began to fill with light, flaring up, swelling, and pulsating like a single living organism. Oh, there's more male fish! From the dark depths where all living things were hiding, the male fish appeared and took the restored path, guided by the bright neon stars, encouraged to move forward. That's so cool. Hundreds of paper envelopes went back to their recipients to complete the chain of communication. A perfect cacophony of emotions and a variety of shapes that Zyablik couldn't ever imagine. Gorgeous! Roach smiled, floating forward. She was right in the middle of a stream of amazing colors and glittering fish scales of all kinds. Moving forward, she became a part of it. Meeting the saved stars one by one and watching them sparkle in the company of other male fish, they continued their way as if making it again. Oh! Is that where his lady friend is? Aw, oh look at all the letters. In a moment, somewhere in the distance, right there where fish flocks were coming, a small planet appeared. It seemed to shimmer and glow with a strange radiance, warm and homely, unlike other stars. The male fish carefully circled around the planet and descended to its surface, a small oasis in the black sands of endless space. Zyablik freezes, not believing his eyes. He's so close now. 
His dream is already in sight. The planet drew him nearer, and not only by gravity or some other incomprehensible laws invented beyond our understanding, it was bewitching. No bigger than Zyablik's asteroid, it was so much greener, brighter, and warmer. As if its atmosphere itself shines and shimmers with different colors. A little green meadow where the fish were rushing was filled with motion and cheerful hubbub. And in the middle, just in the center of the green spaces, she sat. The lady clapped joyfully as she, surrounded by fish, played some game that that Cyablik did not know. Now and then, she would take breadcrumbs from the pocket of her dress and scatter them like fireworks over her head. Numberless little eyes were watching out for a treat. Everything seemed to be too beautiful. Cyablik does not know what to do next. Watching his lady friend with fear from behind Roach's back, she is the one he's dreamt of for months, whose letters he read again and again. Uh, ah, they were almost there when the girl saw him and waved Cyablik joyfully. Well, wave back! Determined, he waves back. The lady smiles and laughs, inviting them to come closer. Roach squinted with satisfaction watching the scene. Before Zyablik could react, Roach arched, strained, pouted, and threw the hero up in the air. One male fish rushes towards Zyablik, offering her back to him. Zyablik goes down lickety-split. And the other fish catches him, and another one, and another one. So basically, they are hot potatoing him all the way down to her, <laughs> to her asteroid. Slow the fall down. Until he reaches the surface of the planet and catching the tail of a stingray, carefully jumps down, ending up right in front of the lady friend. Zyablik takes his cup off chivalrously. The girl stares at Zyablik, frozen, as if she doesn't believe what's happening. Then she takes off a wreath made up of all the varieties of plants on her planet and puts it on Zyablik's head. Welcome home. Happiness and talkativeness returned to the male fish with the restored path, and rumors slowly began to reach the most remote corners of space. Rumors about a little heroic Zyablik who, by the power of friendship, love, and kindness, saved the path. The lady friend was not upset at all that her gifts went to the big fish. They told her about the journey that the birdie with the cup had managed to reach. How he fought the goldfish, how he had agreed with the eel, how he calmed the flounder, and how the lost guiding stars had returned to the sky. She was grateful to Zyablik. If you ask about Road, she is doing well. She found her cap and continued working as a male fish. Sometimes she visits Zyablik, telling news from the vastness that she could only hear and see. Still, someone had to make sure that stars will not disappear again. And now, sitting on her planet, in the middle of a stream of fish stock, they watched the male fish meeting every dawn and sunrise together, rereading letters they had once written to each other out loud. They didn't have to count the hours before an answer arrived or wait for a male fish. They could feel each other's warm hands anytime. Oh, <laughs> such cuteness. I am so happy that I got the happy ending because I was really concerned when it came to Eris the eel thing because I was like I didn't want to cheat her I just wanted to get the star thing from her and I'm going well she's narcissist kind of greedy and I was like I intended to like do a mind game with her because I thought we were going to give her the cup but thinking about it now we were storing our stars underneath so maybe that worked out because we still got our lady friend in the end so Zaya Blick's happy awesome if you guys would like to play this game for yourself, I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. There is technically, I suppose, two other endings, so play it for yourself. Let me know what you think. Let me know what ending you got, because this is just absolutely adorable. Devs, y'all did a fantastic job. Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let's hear them. Happy endings, Battle Cries. Woo! Yeah, yeah. I'll see you guys in the next episode.